Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today we have an Upcrate unboxing and creating. I actually received this box and another mystery box on Christmas Eve so it's taken me a few days to actually get round to doing anything with this but here I am. And also with that being said I hope you've had very happy holidays and a nice relaxing time. Let's just mention the featured artist this month is Vimo Design and be sure to check out their social media. I also really quite like the print as well and the nice crystally picture on there. That will go very nicely with the print collection. We also have the Upcrate magazine giving us some details about the goodies we have received this month. So let's talk about these pens. Well, first of all, they were really hard to get into, but when I opened them, they were the Spectrum Noir water-based tri-pens, where it's three pens in one. Now, I seem to have gotten over my um, dislike for Spectrum Noir at the moment, and I do feel like they've upped their game a little bit and improved greatly, so I am not going to be salty about that. Other items we have is the Faber-Castell Echo Pen in a size 0.1 and it's a very nice liner pen. We also have a Pentel mechanical pencil and I believe it's HB lead in there. It doesn't massively say in the leaflet but I like mechanical pencil. And included as well is a Pebio drawing gum pen in nib size 0.7. I personally love these, I find them really easy to use and you know I like a bit of masking fluid and it's the handy dandiness of that in a pen form so no mess, no wrecking brushes. So let's talk about the Spectrum Noir Tricolour Aqua Pens. Well, like I mentioned before, it's three pens in one stick and we have three of them. Let's do the math there, that's nine pens. Each having a similar colour scheme per stick so we have a blue set which is teal, aquamarine and lake blue. We have green tones which are lime, sage and moss. And finally we have a pinky purple range which is purple, hot pink and heather. I actually noticed that the lime green colour on the green pens seemed a bit more of a yellow so I kind of quite like the selection of colours we have here, they're very useful. The paper we have is by Artspace. And that's something I was really quite impressed with. It is a watercolour pad and it is 300 GSM heavyweight. It also has a very defined texture to it. Now it's not my cup of tea to have one with a very defined texture to it but that is a preference and all in all it's actually really nice paper and as well there are two sheets of tracing paper as well as two sheets of watercolour mixing palette paper. I actually, really, I mean I'm not fussed about the tracing paper, I mean it'll get used for something but the watercolour mixing palette paper was really good and with these pens it made a nice combination. I think if anything would be classed as missing from here it would be a paintbrush, I might have even pushed for a water brush, however I have plenty of those around so again not the end of the world. When diluted they worked really nicely as well as a watercolour, obviously with them being dye based they will reactivate quite easily and looking at the swatches directly onto the paper which have been diluted, again a nice amount of coverage we'll say. They did leave behind a little bit of ghosting but again if you know your materials are going to do that then there's not really anything to be upset about I think and I think as well that can also add to a medium. It's a little like watercolour pencils, they do, they're gonna ghost, you know they're gonna ghost, you might as well use that to your advantage. Anyway I have had a very good waffle about what's in the box, now let's talk about the prompt and get on with the drawing shall we? So this month's Upcrate battle is crystal clear and I think that really suits the materials, the colour scheme, everything. However, personally, I'm not great at drawing crystals so I guess that was an excuse to practice and get a little bit more used to drawing these crystalline structures. I thought a crystal dragon perched upon crystals. How many times have I said crystals? Crystals! So I thought adding a dragon to some crystals would make a very, very good subject. 
I initially sketched it all out with the mechanical pencil and yes, it, it works very nicely and it erases quite nicely too. And then I went around with the Echo Liner and again, lovely, really nice. It was actually nice to try one of these in a very fine nib. I do have one, I think it might have been from a scroll box and it had a wider nib to it and yeah again I found that lovely but I do prefer very fine nibs and it, it was quite nice to work with I would say it's definitely in the same league as the other Faber-Castell pit pens I'm pretty sure it's a different kind of ink in there though I wouldn't say it was as juicy to work with as a rotary ticky though if you want that comparison there once the dragon was lined out, I went and erased all of the pencil marks underneath and it was time to start adding the drawing gum. I thought I would place down where I wanted the highlights on the crystals and then just leave it there for a bit. I also added some lovely twinkly stars in the background because I just thought that is going to work very nicely. So talking about the drawing gum pen, it is a little bit like how a Posca activates where you shake it and then you press the nib in and the ink will come through. However, unlike Posca's, the nib is actually more solid rather than being a fibre tip. And that I find quite useful because obviously masking fluid dries very quickly compared to paint and as well it, it kind of gums up. So when it does that, it's quite easily to clean and remove any of the congealed masking fluid and I also find them a lot more user friendly than perhaps using a fine brush with masking fluid because that's just not going to do your brush any good and a little bit more user friendly than using a plotting tool which I do use on occasions but since discovering these pens I'd much just rather do it this way again it's less clean up and there's no going back and forth dipping it in where it's going to dry in between dips it, it's just a lot easier to use the pen, which I'm quite happy to do. Anyway, it is now time for one of my favourite parts on creating a picture, and that is the colouring side. So I decided a wet and wet technique would be great to add that first layer of colour down. I thought having a kind of galaxy theme in the background would be really nice to shine through on those crystals and just generally add a really nice colour scheme. My first initial wash was a little bit on the pale side and again that's just because I'm figuring these materials out. But it is a good foundation to start off with. Now I did try and add the pen directly to some water on the page just to see if that would spread like it did in the swatches but it, it just wasn't and I kind of left it at that and I thought well I can come back to it all when it's dry and add in that definition a little bit later. I was actually quite impressed with these pens though, like I mentioned before earlier in the video, I've not always been Spectrum Noir's biggest fan, but since they've changed their nibs and they're a little bit more longer lasting, I'm a lot happier with them. I tend to find with water-based pens as well that the nibs can destroy a lot easier and again I didn't find that, although I didn't do a great deal of directly applying them to the paper it was nice to just use them for the little amount of time that I did without the nibs just disintegrating. And for some reason, I know these are water-based, but this is really making me fancy doing a marker-based picture, so I might have to get the old markers out again for a future video, just, just to please myself, really. Now, I wanted to use the greens in here, but I didn't think using those heavy greens would massively complement everything that I'd already placed down. However, that yellowy green was just the right kind of yellow or green to add a little bit of an extra dimension. You know when you just see those almost holographic crystals and it, it kind of reminds me of those metallic pewter dragons that you could get like in the 90s where they'd be holding these gorgeous crystals and I kind of wanted to do that with these on here. I also think with the addition of that yellowy green colour it just broke the picture up enough to not have it completely looking flat and I guess how the artist used them on the print we received this month they used the green on there and it just broke things up a little bit without it being two similar colour tones. Not that I have a problem with that. 
I also ended up using that yellowy colour on the dragon a little bit more prominently than I did on the crystals and again that's just mainly to make it stand out a little bit more. I thought painting and drawing a more pointy mythical dragon rather than the slightly sleepy ones that I do would be perfect for this as well the crystals are quite sharp and pointy as well. And I like the crystals for the wings and for the end of the tail and as well as the ridges around. I just thought oh, that's all very nice and in keeping. And that's also got me geared up for when the Himi horoscope dragons are completed, what to do next. And it, it was quite nice trying to add a different theme to the dragon. Now I came back to the background and added an additional layer of colour on there and I am a lot happier with how that worked out. I wasn't sure how they would interact doing a second layer and I was hoping please don't be too mottly or, or ruin anything and I was really surprised and really happy with how it worked out. And with that second layer they look a lot more vibrant and it just makes that foreground pop out a lot more. So if you're wondering what to do when your colours are looking a bit on the pale side, just go in there with another layer and it should be okay. I also decided to carry on that richness of colour on the wings and a few of the other details, as well as adding a few scale details in there too. And once everything had dried off, I removed the masking fluid that was on the crystals and decided to get in there with them pen tips. Again, I didn't use them a great deal and I preferred to use them to add the detailing in rather than the main bulk of colour but I think that worked out really nice. And again I was really surprised by how well the nibs lasted, they're still nice and pointy now, they haven't disintegrated or gone blunt and it was just really nice to add a more shard-like appearance to the crystals and once I'd got to this stage I was really happy with how the form was going on, it was, it was coming on very nicely, I have really enjoyed this box. It took a lot of willpower over Christmas as well not to open this. I thought, no, I will wait until after Christmas before playing with these. And when I opened them, I was so happy. I didn't have any art materials for Christmas this year because I quite frankly think I have enough. So to have a little box of treasures of my own to open from Upcrate just made me very happy indeed. And of course, we all know I'm a bit of a paper fiend at the moment, so having a new pad of paper, a new pad of watercolour paper to play with as well, always makes me happy. I am slowly gathering up enough different types of watercolour paper, ones that I've received through boxes and ones that have just sort of captured my interest to prepare for another watercolour paper video. I think there's something quite fascinating by going through all the different papers and actually having a record of that. You know, we swatch our paints so why not make samples of paper as well? And in a way that it's easier to look through and refer to. Now I decided to re-outline everything because you know I love doing that. And again it went over everything fine, it didn't reactivate any of the colours underneath and although it was a little on the fine side, just going over areas multiple times makes them lines look a bit thicker. I'm kind of almost getting tattoo vibes out of this one actually, I could sort of imagine this being on somebody's shoulder. I was almost very tempted to cheat and get out a white gel liner actually just to go around the crystals and add a few more sparkles. But really, in hindsight, I probably should have marked all of them off earlier with the gum pen. But never mind, we live and we learn. And it's not exactly a disaster either. I thought just by adding a bit more depth with the coloured pens made the dragon pop out a little bit because we were losing it a little bit there. And just by dabbing on with the paintbrush, the paintbrush with the brush pen, it just added a nice scaly effect and it was a contrast in textures. But I have really enjoyed this box, I think it was a good box, I quite like the materials we had in there. We've had watercolour based markers before but I don't mind trying new ones and we haven't got a million of them either. And that's good because that's not taking up a ton of space which is rapidly declining for me at the moment. I thought having the masking fluid pen was also good and I've just realised as well on the cap it also comes with a spare nib so that's even better. 
So yes, all in all, this was a good box and I really enjoyed it and I hope you've enjoyed watching me unbox it and create with it. Have any of you guys tried these supplies before, whether it's through the box or giving them a try yourself out of curiosity? Let me know what your thoughts are on them as well, I'd like to hear that. Anyway, you lovely lot, I just want to say a massive thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this. I wish you all a very happy new year, hopefully 2021 will be better. And in the meantime, there should be a couple of videos right now that I think you're gonna like. Bye!